and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. The city of Jerusalem was all abuzz. There were, it was more lively than usual. And that's really saying something because the city was often enlarged by, by many thousands of visitors during the time of Passover. And so what was the news that they had in the city that stirred up all this frenzy? What was happening? It was a certain miracle that had been done in the city of Bethany by a certain man from Nazareth. Of course, I'm referring to our Lord Jesus Christ, and the miracle that he performed was raising Lazarus from the dead after he had been in the tomb for four days. To this very day, there is nothing that would gain so much attention than this one miracle. Dead means dead. And we see again and again that we're forced to change our perception, our perspective, when Christ is involved. Dead is dead unless Christ is present, unless he's in your midst. And we know that Christ has the power to transform lives, but do we yet understand that he has the power to transform death, to overcome it, to destroy it? He performed a miracle that became the focus of attention for a whole city. The Jews, the Romans, everyone, everyone in between. No one could ignore this great miracle of our Lord. Little did they know that their celebration would indeed be fulfilled by his betrayal and his suffering and his crucifixion on the death. These were instruments of their salvation. They celebrated the, la the raising of Lazarus from the dead, but in fact, the Lord was about to do something much greater by offering all of humanity a chance to partake of the resurrection. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday, the entrance of our Lord into Jerusalem. And as we were just talking about, we can understand the excitement, the fervor, the enthusiasm that so many people had as they welcomed Christ into the city. They had long awaited the coming of, of the Messiah. And for many, the raising of Lazarus was a sign that he indeed was the Messiah, that he was the anointed one, he was the Christ. One can only imagine the scene of that day. We have a little bit of a taste of it. Our Lord riding on a donkey, entering the city, the people hailed him as their king. They gave him a hero's welcome. They even cried out to him with amazing words. They said, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the king of Israel. Hosanna itself is a very interesting word. It basically means that we pray that you will save us. We pray that you will save us. It basically means, so this was on the, on the lips of, of, of the tongues of the people that day, Hosanna. We should remember that they had, you know, no idea what they were actually asking. When they celebrated the coming of the Messiah, they did not think of him as we understand him today. We have that privilege. They thought of a Messiah as an earthly king, an earthly ruler. They were ready to accept Christ as long as he fulfilled their wishes, their desires, and they wanted to be free from Roman occupancy. They wanted to have their land back to themselves. They wanted to believe that our Lord Christ would be able to do these things. And our Lord had been trying to raise their expectations to the heavens. For the last three years, he was trying to get them to focus on the kingdom of heaven. And this was in his preaching. But they were determined to look at the earthly, the, the worldly. Oftentimes, I, I find that we are the same in our relationship with Christ and his church. We want everything that the Lord offers us, but we want it in our terms. I'm speaking for myself. Maybe you, you don't think this way. We want everything that the church claims to offer, but we want it in our terms, in our timeline. 
I want life without death. I want glory and honor without any kind of struggle and dishonor. I want peace without first going through battle. I want healing, but no surgery. I want the fruit of the Spirit without cultivating anything. I want to live as the new man without allowing first the old man to die. I want the resurrection, but without the cross. And just like this crowd, we all have moments when we turn away and deny our Lord because he does not give us what we want precisely when we want it. For me, this is the similar scene to Palm Sunday. This is it. We can be the first to cry out, Hosanna, save us, Lord. But are we prepared to follow Christ to be saved, no matter where that might lead us? Most of the people that came out to meet Christ that day were not committed to follow him to their death. Even the disciples, they had their moments of weakness. St. Peter, we know he denied him three times in the early morning during the trial. And later he believed and he understood and he repented. But how long until we believe and we understand? This is the question for us. We don't celebrate this feast every year in order to simply remember it. We celebrate Palm Sunday in order to acknowledge that it's part of our life and our story. This is our story. This is our spiritual heritage. This is our new life. Our God became man because he loves mankind. And he experienced all of these things on his way to his death on the cross. Which happened for us, for me, for my salvation. So what happened thousands of years ago in Jerusalem is ours today. The eternal God entered into time and space to sanctify all time and space. He became, he became man in order to redeem man. And so we are entering into the story as we follow Christ and we make him our Lord and our Savior. And as he entered, he received a hero's welcome. It was amazing. And he heard their joy and their cries for Hosanna. And then as we move into Holy Week, we quickly see how the cries of the people who came to greet our Lord Jesus Christ on Palm Sunday, they change. Changes very quickly. They came by hundreds, maybe thousands, in the name of the Lord. And they said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. They greeted him as a victorious king. But what a great difference a few days can make. Less than five days later, he was betrayed. In less than a week, the same crowd that came to greet him and to call him king was calling to crucify him with one voice. By the eve of Friday, or, or, or Friday itself, we, we once encountered the same crowd, but they feel more like a mob. And they no longer are greeting Christ like a king and a hero. They're treating him like a criminal. And he hears their cries, crucify him. And yet even here, at this dark hour, we were reminded of his mercy and his long suffering. He will honor their wishes for Hosanna. It's through their desire to crucify him. He saves them and us in the most unlikeliest way. God saves us by emptying himself and losing his life. He grants us his life through his death on that tree, on that cross. Through his death, he reverses the curse of death. It had to be this way. 
And he is truly our king, worthy of all praise. We're reminded that our feelings are not to be trusted. This sometimes marks a difference in orthodoxy, a little bit different than our brothers and sisters in other faiths. In orthodoxy, we're reminded that our feelings are not to be trusted. The people were not watchful. They were passionate. They were easily swayed and not firm in their faith. They're not firm in their belief in Christ. And we're amazed at their quick change of attitude. And we're left much more amazed in the humility of our Lord Jesus Christ. How much patience, how much mercy he has towards us. His own creation, the very works of his hands. Rebellion. Crucify him. They turn against him. Does he respond with anger? No. He responds with humility. A lesson for us all. In order to turn this curse into a blessing, it's a picture of unimaginable love. A love without limits. A love without preconditions. A love without wavering or faltering. It's a pure love from the pure one. And none of this came as a surprise to our Lord. He foretold, he foreknew the whole situation. He understood what kind of suffering that he would face as he entered in Jerusalem. And when they cheered and sang Hosanna, he already knew how they would change their cheers into insults, into mockery how they would gnash their teeth, how they begged for the criminal Barabbas to be freed and for Christ to be crucified in his place. He already knew. We probably think to ourselves, thank God I'm not like them. I'm not like those people who betrayed Christ. But in fact, we are the same people. I am. I'm speaking for myself. No judgment. We betray Christ every time that we ignore his teachings and we do our will. We betray Christ when we sin. We betray Christ when we don't love our neighbor. We betray Christ when we dishonor and neglect the life that he gives us in his church. We are not so different from those who came to greet the Lord on that day in Jerusalem. We celebrate God when things are going great, when things are going well. But we might turn against him if we become uncomfortable, if we become sick, if we become attacked, or we become punished because of our belief in him. Why were the people so fickle and moody in their attitude towards Christ? because their faith was, was based on outward signs, not on the person of Christ. And we see this example in, in, in St. Mary. St. Mary, she knew her son very well. She did not betray him. She stood by and watched and agonized over the treatment of her beloved son that he was receiving. And her faith was constant. Because her faith was, was based in Christ and not only in his miracles. Faith in the person of Christ can sustain us. It can be a solid foundation that we can build our lives on. And so today's feast is a reminder that we are the people who have cried out Hosanna, but we're also the people who shouted crucify him. We are both. And that's an uncomfortable statement. We are those who cry Hosanna whenever we are in need, whenever we feel threatened, whenever we feel like our lives are out of control. Oftentimes, these are the only times that we pray and we ask God to have mercy on us and to save us. This we do out of the depths of our heart, and this is good. But when hard times pass, we sometimes forget God. We forget Christ in our lives and, and his work in our lives. 
and we can credit him with our successes, but how often do we credit him in our failures? We credit, sometimes in our successes, we credit ourselves. We credit my hard work, my intelligence, everything good in my life is because of me. How often do we credit Christ? Our Lord displays his great love for us in this of the holiest of weeks because he hears both our cries of Hosanna and our cries of crucify him. And this is his great for love, for love for mankind. He allows himself to be crucified when we're against him in order to do precisely what we had begged him to do, to save us. We had cried out to be saved, and he doesn't forget. And he will carry our cries of Hosanna to the only place where it can actually be fulfilled. And he loves us so much that he will use sin against sin. And he will use the sin of the people, our sin, to break the bonds of sin forever. And in breaking the bonds of sin, he will answer our petitions and will truly save us. So in all of this, when Christ is going to the cross, he has not forgotten our cries for help, our cries for a savior. He will indeed answer our cries before this week is out, and he will bow his head and he will say, it is finished. I want to share with you a quote from St. Augustine. He writes, What honor was it to the Lord to be the king of Israel? How great was it for the king of eternity to become the king of humanity? Christ was not the king of Israel so that he could exact tribute, put swords in the soldiers' hands, and subdue his enemies by open warfare. He was the king of Israel in exercising kingly authority over their souls, in consulting for their eternal interests, in bringing into his heavenly kingdom those of faith. Hope and love were centered in himself. Let us celebrate Palm Sunday today by praying that Christ may enter fully into the depths of our hearts and our lives as Lord and King. And I pray that this week we lay aside all earthly cares as much as possible and allow things of our lives to become a, a, to pause just for a moment. Allow the life of the church to become the center of your lives as best as you can. This is, this is actually our natural orientation of Christians. This is our week to remember and to once again enter into our living faith in Christ. It's our time to center ourselves in Him. To find our healing and forgiveness through Him. To understand all that He has accomplished through His power and His love. Today we cry out Hosanna in the highest Christ defeats the power of evil through his perfect sacrifice on the cross and we're liberated from the desire of earthly power. Today we cry out Hosanna in the highest and we follow Christ to his passion and death on the cross and may this week be filled with godly sorrow followed by unending joy and blessings for each one of us and glory be to God forever. Amen. Today the